<laughs> okay, now before we begin, I got two things to say. Uh, first, I didn't know this was supposed to be funny, so mine's not funny. Um, sorry. Uh, the second thing is, there's real scientists in here. Please don't kick my ass when we're done. This is just what I think it works. I looked up a bunch of stuff. This is how I think it works, so. All right. In the beginning, science and religion danced like old lovers. They kissed and twirled off in darkness. Bang! The first few seconds of the universe, everything is in the size of nothing. As it expands outward, space flowing behind it as it eats away into the nothingness. There is no such thing as heat. There is no such thing as density because it's creating it as it goes. As a cloud moves out, creating the universe, leaving it flowing behind it, it's too hot for any type of atoms, too hot for molecules, too hot for anything except its own existence. But as space moves out, as it continues to expand and unfurl into the, into the incoming world, there are spaces, and now there's a little bit of room for it to cool down. And as things cool down, like candles emerging out of wax, bosons and quarks start coming together, and as they come out, they start grouping together, and from them we get protons. For, uh, protons, we get electrons, we get neutrons, and from them we get atoms. Now the first and most common atom in the universe is hydrogen. And that's all there is in this young, young galaxy. Now the very first rule of the universe is there is no such thing as equality, so there's no even spacing of the universe as it goes out. Things clump, like little eddies in the stream, and when these eddies group together, they get together closer and closer, because the second rule of this universe is like attracts like, and as matter pulls with gravity, other bits of the hydrogen come into where these eddies are, and soon you have the first disks of a galaxy, and inside these disks you have smaller disks that will become later on your solar systems. Now, in the very heart of these little itty bitty disks, more and more hydrogen keeps coming together. It gets heavier and heavier because there's more and more coming in. And eventually, it reaches a point where it can't take any more. And two hydrogen clump together. Boom! The first light of a new star. These first stars are insanely hot, bright, bright white suns that blind your eyes with burning like an arc welder if you're watching without the glasses. These first suns begin combining hydrogen to hydrogen, hydrogen to hydrogen. And as it goes, we come up with kind of a combat between the, impul, the, uh, the pulling in of gravity and the pushing out of this brand new stellar wind. Now these young stars, they don't last very long, just a few million years, they burn so fast. But eventually it starts to overcome because the most efficient form of getting energy is hydrogen to hydrogen. And as they go, they start building other things. Hydrogen to hydrogen make helium. And as it keeps building things up, it starts getting less and less efficient. So eventually, this star starts losing its battle between push and pull. And the inside eventually gets so heavy that it collapses. And it collapses again. Now, there's a couple of different things that can happen. In a medium, size sun, between 1.5 and 3, uh, three masses of our solar wind, well, our, our, sol our sun's mass, what will happen is the outer Earth's shell will begin expanding. Now, if there were planets in this, proto in this first uh, galaxy, in this first solar system I'm thinking of, this expanding sun would eat everything as it pushes it away. Eventually, the inside core, which has already collapsed a couple times, will collapse down to iron, and from iron, one final collapse. And at this point, you've basically turned the sun into a giant neutron bomb. Pow! A supernova blows everything. Radiation and heat expanding out hundreds of... I'm going to judge a second. You know, science doesn't have to be funny. <laughs> Who said science has to be funny? My chemistry teacher in high school, Mr. Grubbs, with the comb over, he, uh, he wasn't a very funny man, but a smart man. I'll say that much about it. Okay, judges, scores please. All right, all right, we're waiting on two. Dun, 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 dun. Bill Grubbs actually was the chemistry teacher for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as well, I should point out at some point. <laughs> He's always talking about that. Okay, everyone, and we're waiting for the back. Okay, here we go. At lowest to highest, 6.21, uh, 7.77, an 8.5, and an 8.5. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for together for the sky.